We all know that China and Japan are both high-speed rail powerhouses, but comparing the high-speed rail shapes of China and Japan, we will find that the heads of the high-speed rails are very different. The heads of the China high-speed rails are short, showing a bullet shape, while the head of the Japan's is a long piece that sticks out, like a platypus. A large part of the early Chinese domestic high-speed rail technology originated from Japan, but why does China use bullet heads? What's the difference between the two types of heads? China's bullet or Japan's platypus, which one is the ultimate king among high-speed trains? Hi, everyone. Welcome to Hot Topics Time, a channel to interpret news from a new perspective and explore the wisdom behind the news. Before we start today's video, please subscribe to our channel, which is the encouragement that we can create more videos. Okay, let's continue the topic we are talking about. As the first country in the world to put a high-speed railway system into commercial operation, Japan's Shinkansen is the source of all high-speed railways in the world. It is precisely because of this that Japan has taken many detours in the process of building high-speed railways. The most typical example is the construction of tunnels. Considering the cost-effectiveness issue when building tunnels in Japan, the cross-sections are generally narrow, which makes the high-speed trains galloping into the tunnels to make bursts of harsh roars. What's more troublesome is that this roar will not dissipate in a short time, but will continue to echo in the tunnel, which is very disturbing to the people. There are only two ways to solve this problem, the first is to rebuild the tunnel and expand the cross-section of the tunnel, the second is to rectify the high-speed rail and modify the shape of the high-speed rail. The first method requires a lot of money, which is obviously not realistic. Therefore, Japanese experts began to work on transforming the shape of the high-speed rail. The final result is the platypus-shaped locomotive we see today. The use of such a locomotive can effectively reduce the normal shockwave generated by the train in high-speed running and weaken the roaring sound. In the process of introducing high-speed rail, China has also made adaptive improvements. After some research, experts found that the platypus front is not suitable for China. Because the front of the 20 meters is too wasteful of materials, and it also has a certain impact on the speed of the high-speed rail. As for the noise problem, it is not a big problem in China. China's land is vast, and high-speed rail tracks can be built in places far from residential areas. In addition, with Japan as a lesson from the past, China later directly repaired the cross-section of the tunnel to be wider. In this way, it not only ensures the speed but also reduces the cost and noise. Therefore, the reason why small countries like Japan and South Korea prefer to use the platypus high-speed rail locomotive is actually very simple, their narrow land area means that the high-speed rail must be close to the urban area or passing through it, which means that the vibration noise generated by high-speed trains moving at high speed will inevitably affect the daily life of urban residents. The more slender platypus structure, however, can effectively reduce the generation of normal shockwaves that can generate noise, which will effectively reduce the pressure that high-speed rail trains must bear on the sound insulation facilities on both sides of the railway when passing through urban areas so as to limit the noise intensity of the high-speed railroad within the standard range. But a country with a large land area like China can solve the noise problem by changing road planning and keeping high-speed rail tracks away from residential buildings. These countries have the ability to lay safety strips and large buffer zones for their high-speed rail tracks, and no matter how loud the trains are, it is unlikely to cause any nuisance problems when the surrounding area is unoccupied. Moreover, compared with the platypus structure, the bullet structure has a higher vehicle interior volume and can carry more passengers, allowing the high-speed railway train to carry more passengers on each departure, so as to improve the passenger flow transfer efficiency of high-speed railway. As for the China-Japan high-speed rail, which is better? Well, the answer is obvious. In terms of speed, comfort, cost and length, China's high-speed rail is superior.
In the early 1980s, the speed of trains in China could only reach 40 km per hour, while Japan already had a Shinkansen with a speed of over 210 km per hour. However, today, Japan's Shinkansen is still hovering at a speed of about 300 km per hour, while the fastest operating speed of China's high-speed rail has reached 486.1 km per hour. It took China less than 40 years to complete this leap. After talking about speed, now let's talk about comfort. There was once a guy who did such an experiment when he was riding the high-speed train in China. At a high speed of 310 km per hour, the coin stood on the windowsill for 9 minutes and did not fall down, even as the train slowed as it entered the station, until the train needed to change the track, and the coin fell. When the video came out, people all over the world fell into shock. Japan is naturally reluctant to admit that their Shinkansen is worse than China's high-speed rail, so they also repeated this experiment on the Shinkansen, but after 10 minutes of hard work, they couldn't stand the coin, and finally they had to give up. Moreover, although Japan's Shinkansen is not as fast and comfortable as China's high-speed rail, its fare is much higher than China's. The fare per kilometer is about $0.3, while China only needs less than 74 cents. The reason for such a large price gap is that the manufacturing cost of China's high-speed rail is the lowest in the world. When Britain built high-speed train, it cost a total of 923 billion yuan for the 348-kilometer line, or an average of 2.6 billion yuan per kilometer. In contrast, China's high-speed rail costs only about 130 million yuan per kilometer, the difference between the two is 20 times. Although the cost of Japan's Shinkansen is cheaper than that of British high-speed rail, it is at least four times higher than that of China's high-speed rail. It can be seen that from the perspective of cost, China's high-speed rail also won. The last thing to talk about is the mileage issue. As we said earlier, Japan is the first country to put high-speed railways into commercial operation. The Japanese Shinkansen came out decades earlier than China's high-speed railways. Therefore, so Japan should have the upper hand when it comes to mileage. But due to the small land area and low actual demand, Japan has been far behind China in terms of high-speed rail construction mileage. According to official statistics, there are about 16 countries with high-speed rail in the world, and among these 16 countries, China's high-speed rail mileage is the worthy first, accounting for more than 65% of the world's high-speed rail mileage. The decades-old Japanese Shinkansen can only be ranked second. Okay, that's all for today. Please put your comments below and share your insightful ideas with other people. Thank you so much for your continuous support. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. Hot Topics Time, time to explore the wisdom behind the news, we will see you in the next video.